Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel and another video. And in this week's video, we'll be taking a look at how to use these four table saw jigs I have. Now, each one of these jigs is from Rockler, but this is not a sponsored video. So everything you hear in this video is my own personal opinion. If you're interested in these jigs, you can check out the description where I've got a link to the product. And with that said, let's get right into it. So first up on our list is this 45 degree miter sled. Now this is useful for cutting those perfect 45 degree miters, obviously. And the problem with cutting miters on a miter saw is that it's really hard to dial that miter saw into 45 degrees. And while most table saws come with a miter gauge that you can do this, the problem is that there's a lot of play and wobble on those miter gauges that you can see there. But with this miter jig, there is a little slot at the bottom that you can clamp your board to. And then one other thing that's worth mentioning is that this miter jig, it sits a lot closer than your standard miter gauge to the saw, which allows you to make those cuts a little bit closer to the blade for more accurate measurements. Here's a closer look at that angle cut together, and you can see that the square fits perfectly down in there, and that this really is right at 45 degrees. So to use this jig in a practical setting, such as a picture frame or something like that, you'll use a stop block up against the fence, and then you adjust the stop block after you've made the first two cuts. This way you'll have two smaller pieces and two longer pieces, which will be the exact same size. Now this is just a scrap board that I'm using to cut these miters real quick, but you can see that all four angles lined up really well, so that jig works well in my opinion. Next up on our list is this thin rip jig, which will allow us to cut pieces to a consistent width for whenever we need multiple repeating pieces. And the problem with cutting thin pieces on the table saw is that you can get a piece only as thin as the width of your push stick you're using. And when I tried this with my push stick, I was only able to get the piece a little under three quarters of an inch. And you can use the grip or push block to get pieces a little bit thinner, but still, even using that, they're not quite as thin as you would need them to be. So I wasn't even able to get it to a quarter of an inch using the gripper. And so that's where the thin rip jig comes into play. So we'll use this piece sort of like a feather board, and we'll move the board right up against it on the other side of the fence, and that can measure the width that we'll want to cut that piece out. After each cut, you'll adjust the actual fence instead of the jig. That way you can use that measurement that we had earlier to make sure the spacing is the same on these. And just as a side note, I should definitely have the zero clearance insert on my table saw. So just a quick disclaimer there, but you can see that I got this piece a lot thinner. And one benefit of having pieces this thin is that they bend a lot better. So if you do need to build a curve, you can glue multiple pieces together that way. The third jig we'll be taking a look at is this crosscut sled. Now I made my own crosscut sled previously, but the problem with my crosscut sled is that it's very heavy and very bulky. Honestly, I kind of hate getting the thing out to use it. And since this sled is a whole lot lighter and easier to use, I'll be using it a lot more frequently. So assuming all the channels on table saws are not in the same spot, this is shipped to you a little bit bigger and then you cut it flush yourself using the bottom rail that lines up down in that channel. This will essentially give you a zero clearance sled as the side of the sled will now set completely flush right up against the blade. So what I like about this sled is that there are several adjustments and you can see how easily this thing slides right across the top of the table. I clearly didn't have the blade cranked up high enough for this, but where you'll use this sled is to make accurate cross cuts that you can measure much more precisely and accurately than you can with a miter saw. There's also an adjustable stopper that lets you make multiple repeating cuts very easily, and this is way more efficient and accurate than once again using the miter saw. And so with this sled, I was able to cut these four scrap pieces to the exact same length. Probably the most useful part of this crosscut sled is the ability to adjust the angle at which the crosscut is made. So it has this really nice gauge that lets you dial it in right to the angle that you want. And then the fence itself is also adjustable if that's necessary for the cut. And just a quick word on this sled as far as the quality. This is a really nice crosscut sled. I really like all the adjustments, the different clamps, all the hardware that comes with it is great quality, but the sled also just looks really nice as well. And the final jig on the list is the taper jig, and this is probably the jig that I'm most excited about because up until this point, I hadn't figured out a way to rig something up to be able to make tapered cuts. 
And just like we did with the crosscut sled, the first thing that's necessary is to trim off the excess, basically giving us once again a zero clearance sled. So the fence guide is fully adjustable. You just put the piece that you want to cut the taper on, line up the edges to the outside of where the sled is flush with the saw, and then you just simply make the cut. And there's two swivel clamps that hold the piece down. I like to keep my hand just on top for a little bit of extra security, but it's really simple to make a taper cut with that. And while I think that was a good example, let's look at a more practical scenario. So this board is about 34 inches long, which could resemble an extra long table leg. But let's say I want to put a tapered pitch about 28 inches up on this leg. So I mark 2 inches in at the bottom, and then I mark where 28 inches up at the top is. Take a straight edge and just draw a line on that pitch. Next, you just have to line the line up with the flush edge of the table saw jig. So you take that mark at the top, you line it up with the outside of the jig, and then at the bottom, you align where that line is once again with where the edge of the jig is. When you put the clamps on the board, obviously make sure that those clamps don't extend out past the line. You wouldn't want the saw blade to hit those clamps. And then once again, using the rail on the bottom of the sled that lines up with the miter slot on the table saw, you just make the cut. And that's all there is to it. And so just like the crosscut sled, this is a very efficient and effective way to make this cut. And I know I'll be using this all the time. So that'll wrap it up for this one. I hope you found this content useful and you enjoyed the video. These jigs will definitely be super useful on upcoming builds. Once again, if you are interested in any of these, you can check out the description where I have a link to each. So drop a comment below and let me know what you thought of this video. Or if you have any of these jigs, let me know what you think of them. So once again, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, stay tuned for more.